guys, Taylor Swift is officially the only pop star that matters. Welcome to New York. 2014 belongs to Taylor Swift. You know, like 2009, that was also the year of Taylor Swift, but it was the year of many others too. It was the year of Beyonce, Lady Gaga, the Black Eyed Peas. But now, Taylor Swift has the biggest album of the year. The biggest single of the year. She's at war with Spotify because she's the only artist with enough clout to do so. And she just became one of the few people to ever get knocked off the number one spot by herself. And there's no one left to oppose her, like, you know, Ariana Grande might get there someday, or Iggy Azalea, but right now they're too new. They could be flashing the pants for all we know. Taylor Swift has vanquished all her competitors. And that's not who Taylor Swift was supposed to be. She got famous for being the every girl, but that's who she is now. Look, look this is the new video. Every time she's played dress up like this before, it's with the understanding that's not supposed to be the real her. See, fake Taylor, real Taylor. Fake Taylor, real Taylor, and so on. But there is no real Taylor in this one. That's her. That's who she is presenting herself as. This is a full on Lady Gaga video. Taylor Swift has supplanted Lady Gaga. Quite frankly, I've had more than enough Taylor Swift in my life for a long, long time, but. It's what we got. So get ready for yet another episode of liking boys, breaking up with boys, and being mad at haters with Taylor Swift. And this is a big one. It was so big that it immediately vaulted to the top of the charts, even quicker than Shake It Off did. Clearly this is the one that will symbolize Taylor Swift's dominance of the entertainment industry. Let's see, which one is this one about? Nice to meet you, where you been? I could show you incredible things, magic, madness, heaven, sin. Okay, it's the first one. I could show you incredible things. Is she trying to make herself out to be some kind of magical goddess of love here? This is drifting dangerously close to bang bang territory. Uh, at least she's finally admitting it. Grab your passport and my hand. No more trying to hide the colossal arrogance. Oh, I'm humble, regular old Taylor Swift. No, she's cutting out the bullshit and straight up telling us she's the greatest person in the universe who never ever makes a mistake. Oh my god. Wait a minute. I... What am I seeing here? Wait, how do you know those are the only two options? Because if so, that means every single past relationship has gone down in flames, meaning I don't even know why she thinks lasting forever is even a possibility. But I guess that's the point. Taylor Swift criticizing herself? Cause darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream. She's straight up saying that everything the tabloids have always said about her is totally true. Oh my god, it's like I'm witnessing the birth of a unicorn. I can't believe it. Oh my god. Taylor Swift is actually demonstrating self-awareness, that means she can analyze her own weaknesses and resolve them before we can exploit them. My god, she'll be unstoppable! Okay, well, um, let me take this line by line. Okay, that lyric is very good. That is also a very good line. Holy shit, Taylor Swift is on point. Not only is this the rare self-critical Taylor Swift song, it's also really well written. There's a scene why Taylor Swift is considered some kind of great songwriter, but oh, oh my god, every single line here connects. This is amazing. Taylor Swift, the lyricist, has never been sharper. I'm, I'm legitimately impressed. So hey, let's be friends. I'm dying to see how this one ends. You know what? Not only do I think I actually like this song, because of it, I also somehow hate Shake It Off even more than I already did. It's like this whole song exists to show how unbelievably bullshit the last one was. But I can't make them stay. At least that's what people say. Including me, I say that on my next single. 
Or check this out. My ex-man brought his new girlfriend. She's like, oh my god, but I'm just gonna shake it to the I spent hours on the internet looking for footage of Taylor Swift saying, oh my god, to prove that she was exactly the same as her ex man's new girlfriend, and all I had to do is wait to shoot this follow-up. Oh my god, look at that face. Yeah, following Shake It Off with Blank Space is a shocking swerve. It's it's like Journey wrote a song called Actually Go Ahead and Stop Believing. Got a long list of ex-lovers, they'll tell you I'm insane. But she's not even defending herself. She's not gonna tell you they're wrong. She's admitting they're totally right and that she chases the wrong guys and goes insane. It's hard to imagine her singing this without just, like, the craziest eyes. And not only are all these punchlines solid, it's... she's just completely unbothered by it. Like, at first I thought I might have heard, like, a hint of sadness in there, like, regret over how every relationship she has crashes and burns, but... no, the more I listen to it, the more I think, no, she's not ashamed. She's totally cool with it. And I'll write your name. Oh, okay, that's a that's a pen. She'll write your name in the blank space. Okay, okay, see, I thought that you know that click, that was you know I got a blank space for you, babe. It would have fit. And you know what? I'm fine with with her being happy about it. I don't think she should be ashamed of having a rocky love life. It's not like I'm gonna date her. And more importantly. Yes. Duh! She's 25! She's not supposed to be good at dating people! No one's good at it! Even people who've been with the same person since they were 14 aren't good at it! God, is it weird that saying all this harsh stuff about herself makes me like her a whole lot more? Cause look, if the backlash is anything to go by, Taylor Swift has a bit of a charisma problem. The image of innocent, sweet Taylor has long been supplanted by mean girl Taylor Swift, upper ass celebrity Taylor Swift, can't even play her album on Spotify, what the hell Taylor Swift? And, and a lot of it does come from people looking too closely at her love life. Look, I, I don't care about her personal life. I'm sure she's sick of people caring about it. Unfortunately for her, it's part of her image now, especially since she writes about it in her music a lot. And I think I am uniquely qualified to diagnose how this song fixes everything because of my position as an internet reviewer. Okay, get ready everyone, because I'm about to spill one of the trade secrets. It's, it's gonna be like one of those Magician's Tricks Revealed specials. I'm gonna get kicked out of the union for this. Matter of fact, I better put on a mask so no one knows it's me. Alright. So, you notice how I crack a lot of jokes about how I'm a broke, pathetic, lonely loser? Well, there is a reason for that. Now, I'm not saying those jokes aren't true. They're very true. Don't think for a second I'm making any of that up. <laughs> but, I tell those jokes for another reason, because Otherwise, I would just be some bitter, pathetic jerk-off talking smack about people who have accomplished things a billion times better than I ever will, and that gets old real quick. But I start cracking jokes about my own pitiful life, and now, well, I'm still a bitter, pathetic jerk-off talking smack about better people, but now it's okay, because at least I'm not pretentious. And this works if you're a crotchety disease old man shit-talking Star Wars, or you're a world-famous pop singer who likes to talk smack about their exes. That's not to say owning up to your faults is easy, especially if you're Taylor Swift and you already take way too much shit. And, and yet, here she is doing it! To write a song that is this honest and open is a gutsy move. Hey, let's see what she said about it, see where she got the strength. My favorite line in that song, we were talking yeah. about this, uh, you look like my next mistake. You know what's interesting about this song is that I actually started writing it as a joke. You know, the media has kind of had a, had a field day talking about what they think my personal life is like. So I just kind of thought, all right, so they've drawn up like this, fictici this fictitious profile. I just thought of how incredibly complex and interesting that character actually is if yeah. it were a real girl. Oh, okay. Bullshit! Boo! Boo! What a cop out! I don't believe that for a second. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the tabloids are distorting her image in billions of stupid ways, but you're gonna tell me that the person who wrote this line I can make the bad guys good for a weekend and this line be that girl for a month wasn't speaking at least a little from experience. You're gonna tell me there's not a speck of introspection there, that there's this is all just pure invention you're seeing from the point of view of a fictional character like it's like you're Slim Shady or something. Taylor Swift, if that's true, if you invented this character entirely from whole cloth and it has nothing to do with your lived reality, well, 
goddamn, start writing some novels. You will win, like, all of the awards. And make sure that none of it is based on your life, because you write your fictional characters way better than you write yourself. If this was just a joke, well... You guys ever see, you know, the other guys where Mark Wahlberg can dance ballet really well? We used to do those dance moves to make fun of guys when we were kids, show them how queer they were, okay? You learned to dance like that sarcastically? Yeah, I guess. Actually, I guess that one part did sound a little fictional. Boys only want love if it's torture. At least I really hope she doesn't believe that. Taylor Swift fans, that is not true. Do not go around believing that. Okay, bad role model, Taylor Swift. I don't know, her interview there, that does kind of harsh my vibe on this song, honestly. I liked it better when I thought it was honest. I don't know, maybe it still is. Taylor Swift sounds like she's in denial anyway, who cares? I'm not gonna let that ruin the song for me. I like it. It's sharp, it's solid, it's just a thoroughly impressive piece of writing. Thumbs up, thumbs up all the way, okay? I'm out. Why am I already sick of this song? Jeez, I spent the entire review talking about how much I liked it, and yet I kinda don't want to hear this song anymore. I don't know, it's... Wait, what is... I, I think I figured out the problem here, it's... It's... This sick beat. There we go. This sick beat. Sick in the sense of limp. It, it's not terrible, I mean, I really like the words, but the, the melody, the, the music, it's... It's never better than passable. And that... that matters a lot for me. I, mean, I can talk about what this song means to Taylor Swift and her image all day, it's just... I'm not sure I want to hear it all day. Which I have been. All day. For days. I guess, uh... I, I felt the same way for Love the Way You Lie or Same Love. Both of which I thought were interesting, quotable, different, very brave songs. But they were also songs I didn't want to listen to very often. And Blank Space is yeah, more listenable than those songs, but... I don't know, if you're gonna be crazy, be crazy! Go full Alanis, do it. This is just way too similar to that Keep Keep Bleeding song, I don't know. It's just not up enough. God, I, I spent the whole review hyping this song up and then, uh, I don't know, it was like I was really into it for a short time, I just wanted to have it around all the time, but then I immediately just get sick of it and my feelings about the whole thing go south because it's like I'm being smothered by it, I just want it to go away. And then all of a sudden some other hot pop song comes along and the whole thing starts all over again and uh, it's like, it's like something, I don't know. Whatever. Have you heard that new Bruno Mars song? Oh man, that is great. I never want to hear another song again along like this. I got a blank space, baby. And I'll write your name.